Good morning again. We are in this second week of Advent and we're focusing on peace today. Well, I'm focusing on hope. <laughs> so I read the scripture today. We just heard the scripture and the sermonic theme is staying hopeful, staying hopeful. I think when it all boils down though, that hope and peace and love and joy are sisters, our siblings and have a lot to do with our sustainability and our spiritual journey. It's been 25 years now. My cousin had an 11 year battle with cancer that word cancer is not a strange word to many of us. Many of us know it, we've experienced it intimately. We know someone or either we ourselves have been on that journey. For my cousin, it would come and go. But that last time, that last time when we got the call, I knew and she knew and we all knew that there would be no return. And then the oddest thing happened. While my cousin was in the bed, Surrendering, with tears coming down her face, I got a package in the mail that said it was from my cousin. This was kind of eerie. She's sick. How possibly could I have gotten this package? And then I realized it was close to my birthday and what my cousin had done in her last week of living, she had bought me a birthday gift. And she had sent it, she had had it handmade, beautiful bracelet with my birthstone in it. She had tried to live each day with purpose, even as her days were numbered. At the end, she had sent me this lucky charm. She had sent me hope. I still have that bracelet, and for years, when I'm feeling low or I'm headed out to something, I grab that bracelet and I put it on. Hope is like that. You don't need a whole lot, just a little. Like baking powder and baking soda, I'm always amazed that recipes requiring those two ingredients only ask for one half teaspoon. Such a small amount, but leave it out if you want. As it is with hope, we don't need a lot of hope, but we need some hope. We don't need large proportions, but we need it to not only go in our dishes, but we need it to be dispersed in our lives. A little bit of hope that somebody cares about us, that the storm is passing over, that we're gonna make it. God sees all and knows all. A little bit of hope goes a long ways. Not storage capacity, but a little bit in our pantry. A little bit of hope goes the miles. It's important for us to have and remain hopeful, especially in these times. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Isaiah has a vision of the future, a little bit of hope. The vision begins with imagery of a stump and roots. Those are remnants of a tree that has been cut down. A stump grows from this tree that has been cut down. Isaiah foretells of liberation and freedom and deliverance. It won't happen in his lifetime nor the people that are listening to him. But a vision of the future is the hope needed in the present moment. How many of you have seed soaps, hope, seed, <laughs> have seeded seeds of hope in your loved ones, in your grandbabies, in younger people that are going to live beyond you? This new shoot says the text, will lack the weakness of the former Davidic kings. This vision includes killer animals being turned into pets, says John Golden Gay. All of creation, including natural adversaries, see, natural adversaries have been transformed. They don't look different. The lion is still a lion, for instance, in all the ways that makes it a lion. Its physical characteristics have not been altered, but its behavior has dramatically changed. The lion, known as a hunter, does not have to hunt in order to be a lion. And because of these changes, these animals will live peacefully together. A vision of the future radically different from the hell that they are going through now. It won't always be this way, says Isaiah. Hang in there. So we have established that hope is a good thing to have. Amen? 
Hope, hope y'all with me? We have established it's especially important to have hope when you're going through tough times and seasons. But hope is all about timing too. Have you guys ever seen Double Dutch? Well, there are these two ropes that are moving in opposite directions at the same time. And in order to enter, you have to run in at just the right time. Amen? A second off, and you're not only not going to jump in, you're going to disrupt the flow of the two ropes. Sometimes there are multiple people playing double dutch, and they all have to jump at the same time. It's all about timing and rhythm, and so it is sometimes with hope. Sometimes life and people and situations, you got to enter and give them hope at just the right time. you got to jump in at just the the right time. The prophet Isaiah jumps in and declares good news. The Israelites are at that point. Enough changes to their life, enough displacement, enough constructive feedback, enough complaining, enough of what we didn't do right. I was talking to a friend the other day and she asked about another friend and I paused and she said, wait, wait, is this bad news? She said, don't tell me. I can't take any more bad news. So if it's bad news, keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. What she was saying is her capacity for bad news had been capped. But the cup of hope was open for business. I imagine that the Israelites felt like that too. Don't go bringing me no bad news. And so the prophet gives them hope. It can be scary when people lose hope. They're not just content to be miserable by themselves, but when people lose hope, they spread their gloom around. Last Sunday, we watched Home Alone, a Christmas classic. But there's another Christmas classic that's been around for decades, The Grinch That Stole Christmas. The Grinch is determined to do one thing, Ruin Christmas for everyone else. But like most people, the Grinch has a story we don't see. When you see people being mean and critical and cantankerous, oftentimes there's a story that we don't see. And so when the Grinch was young, he was hurt around Christmas. His wounds were never addressed. And when we don't address wounds, you know that statement, wounded people hurt and mooned other people. And so, miserable folks do what? Make others miserable. Now, grouchy people do what? They take the temperature real low in the room. The Grinch steals from others what had been stolen from him. When people don't have hope, they turn to despair. They also impact those that are around them. So it is important for us to hold hope as a people of faith, to hold on to hope. Don't need a whole lot, but you do need a little. The world around us is begging for hope. Barring a turn from the economist, it is in strong demand. We need hope of the vision of the future in this text today that seems to be different from the reality of what we are living. For those of us in college or school, we're coming to the end of a quarter or a semester. At the end, usually papers and exams are due. And then comes in the mail or online now, the grades. And students and professors and teachers do not always agree about the grade. And so it was for one student. He got a B when he really thought he deserved an A. And so he met with his professor and said, hey, what is paper? I think you didn't give me the grade that I deserve. They go over his paper and the teacher explains what was expected in the paper. And the teacher declares to this male child, you got a B and that's what you earn. But you're capable of an A. 
The student left feeling what? Hopeful. The professor didn't change his grade at all. The professor was like, you got what you got. But the professor put in him that he was capable of something more. And so that student left with hope. I've been watching this series and I'm trying to get to the end and there's a bit of suspense and I want to get to the end and I want to find out how it all turns out. Here today in the text, we are offered an end to the story. Verse 6 says, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the earth. The Bears and the Packers will coexist together today peacefully. (laughs) The Democrats and the Republicans will work together. The young and the mature will help each other out. The able-bodied and those with disabilities will work together. The LGBTQ and the non-LGBTQ will work together. People who have been kissed by the sun and people who have been kissed by the snow will exist together. This story, scholars will tell us, is not about Jesus, but I think as Christians, we can perceive Jesus and ourselves in this story. We recognize the story of new life coming from fallen and dead spaces. The stump no longer has the capacity to grow, but it makes room and creates a hospitable environment for the shoot to spring forth. The prey and the hunted can live together peacefully. It reminds us that what seems unlikely and almost impossible can exist. Like the professor gave to the student, the prophet is giving us hope. Like eggs, milk, or whatever you keep in your kitchen, please this week add hope to the list. Let us stay hopeful. Amen.